like it was non-canon. Like the episode before that and the episode after that exist in a different realm than the episode that that than the realm that episode happened in. But yeah, I just I like knowing that wrestling companies are willing to do that because it's not that's, that, it was definitely not something I've been used to seeing. You know, great. Eddie Guerrero was the last. Well, I guess Chris Benoit was the last one we got, but then WWE fucking put the brakes on that real quick. And, and give the devil his due. Everybody was out there talking about how shitty it was that WWE didn't put out a tribute at the time. WWE actually took time and made a very beautiful tribute that they aired on um, on SmackDown. Uh-huh. So I, I do like the fact that they didn't just put together a bunch of stock photos and some cheesy music and just jumped it out right away on Monday well, Night they, Raw. Yeah, yeah. They had the the banner in memory of him, and then on, on SmackDown when they had time to produce a very beautiful uh-huh. segment they did. And I recommend watching both of them, and there's a lot of them online from various people, fans and alike. There are so many tribute videos, and I recommend watching them all. But I'd say for sure watch the AEW and the WWE tribute video. You don't need mm-hmm. to watch the whole episode, but that video is Even a bunch of awesome. WWE superstars were doing tributes. Uh, uh, Byron Saxton kicked it off. Uh, saying saying it's Monday night, you know what that means. Uh, Xavier Woods did the discus clothesline. Yeah. Um, there 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 was a lot of a lot of little touching things in the WWE show that uh, that I feel like you don't normally see either, and I will give them credit for that. Yeah. But, uh, and, and and I can't I can't be mad at WWE for not doing more for somebody who just left the company completely shit all over Vince McMahon with a lot of his sketches in the beginning of his career at AEW. Uh, you know, he, he, it's, it's, it's actually surprising. He got what he did get from that. I, right. If you, if you actually step back and only look at it business wise, he got more than you would think he would. Oh. He was never a main event guy. He never sold tickets. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love watching Brody Lee. I love the man. But I never once tuned in to see Luke Harper wrestle, and I don't think many people bought a ticket to see Luke Harper wrestle. Yeah. Uh, well, and, you know. Anytime the Bludgeon Brothers or, or the amalgamation of was in the ring, I was always more Luke Harper than Rowan. Oh, for sure. They were fun to watch. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's like, it's good. It, it's cool. We just hate to see somebody so young. And somebody who, who, who just was taken from us so quickly, obviously – there was about a month and a half where he was really ill, but this is one of the rare occasions the wrestling world did kind of keep it under wraps. And even then, for a 41-year-old who's in, as far as we know, perfect health, to be gone with, within a month and a half is still super quick. <laughs> that, that doesn't happen normally. It's it's it, Honestly, I'm glad he got to have the dog collar match, but it's a, such a shame that everybody's going to go on wondering if that was what, you know, put him over the edge. Well, I, I don't think it did. I don't think, obviously, it had anything to do with that. Um, I I think medically, there's really no correlation. It's not like he was stabbed in the lungs or something, especially for double lung failure. Yeah. Um, I mean, maybe it could have been a blood clot, you know, then, then you could say maybe it came from that. But then again, you can get that just doing a regular old suplex too. Mm-hmm. And as of this recording, I'm 99.9% sure there has been nothing released about what happened with his lungs. We know they quit. We know he had a lung issue, but yeah, it's been mum on it's, what it's exactly really it weird was. Too, because, because you'd assume there would be some kind of concrete, you know, this is what happened by now. Oh, I'm sure there, I'm sure his family knows, but you know, we don't know. And and everybody's been really big about it not being COVID related, and I'm taking that at face value. I believe yeah. them that it has nothing to do with COVID. Right. Uh, most forty one year olds don't die within a month and a half from COVID. That's not normal either. So I, I definitely take that at face value. I don't know. It's just really caught everybody off guard, even us here at, at Beef Sticks. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know it was w- within minutes of hearing about it. I was on the horn messaging you like, oh, shit, this happened. Right. I, I, and I, I yeah, was I, in disbelief while I was messaging you. <laughs> I couldn't believe it because I, uh, I, I'd actually just gotten a text from my son's mother who messaged me and told me it. And then you sent it to me, and I'm like, holy shit, what's going on here? I'm sitting here. I was fucking relaxing in a bathtub. I had bubbles and everything, and, and my uh, 
my sativa Epsom salt, which I just love. Nice. And uh, I was just relaxed and having fun. All of a sudden, everybody's blowing up my phone about fucking <laughs> Brody Lee dying. And I was like, holy shit. What's going on here? Crazy. It is what a, crazy. The crazy world. Yeah, word, word about that broke out and got to people faster than word about people breaking into the Capitol. Oh, much faster. <laughs> but, you know, people care about Brody Lee. Nobody gives a shit about the Capitol. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> At least they'll get to remodel now, right? Exactly. <laughs> Gotta buy a new podium, damn it. Um... Do you have any, any anything else on Brody Lee, uh, on John Huber, before we move on to uh, to more positive news, which is uh, which was really fun? He's gonna be missed, and it's it's gonna be really hard going with AEW forward, and and just wondering, you know, what could have came if he would have made it through. Yeah, agreed. It was a flame that was put out far too soon. And and I think it's a shame that WWE never really gave him a, a singles opportunity shot. And I'm not putting this on WWE, but uh, just because he wouldn't fucking speak with a southern accent. Dude, I'm from he Canada. He wasn't <laughs> hillbilly enough. Just wasn't hillbilly enough. Brody Lee wasn't hillbilly enough. Well, you know, I don't know what to tell you about that. <laughs> and then i guess yeah i don't know if we're are we talking about the bruce pritchard interview in the next episode uh the bruce pritchard interview he, he did an interview um uh, i'm not sure with who but he had talked about how wwe fans don't like new things <laughs> they're they don't want new things and it's clearly obvious he's talking about vince mcmahon <laughs> <laughs> And WWE came out and said they completely rejected everything he had to say. Right. <laughs> I thought that was... Well, that's that's Bruce Pritchard. I love Bruce Pritchard <laughs> um, uh, as his podcast, but he's definitely... He's an old-timer. Stuck in, he's a very cornet kind of person. He mm. doesn't want to... He doesn't want the wrestling world to move on because he likes it where he was. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of things I see today, too, where I'm like, I like what I grew up with better than what it is now, but... Every generation's gonna have that, you know. It's mm-hmm. the same with. I hear so many people, even my age and, and older, talk about music or TV today. The worst thing, man, the worst thing is when people are like, "Oh, cartoons nowadays suck so bad." When we were young, they were awesome. Kids have much better fucking cartoons today than we ever had. All of our cartoons were just to sell fucking toys. I These don't know. cartoons I was, are written I was by young people during the more who, educational era, you know. Yeah, which isn't good. It was shitty. We, you know, these school these buses still the shit. Yeah, it's it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like all these shows now are written by smart writers who went to fucking college and have degrees and and think outside the box and actually it actually put like thought into where the story's going and the twists and turns and character development and it's like our cartoons every episode the characters were the exact fucking same from yep. beginning to end. Well, in the no middle, they change watch, a little bit. But... They made they made shows for syndication back then. You know, there was no reason yeah, to watch them in like... order. It was always a a new, entirely different story right. each time. So it's like, I mean, yeah, there, it goes with wrestling, movies, music, uh, books, social media. Anything that's around. my thing. That's my hang up. I can't move on to any new social media. There you go. <laughs> it's just, nope. It's <laughs> difficult though, isn't it? Yeah, it is. The fact that the fact that Facebook is actually an old person's social media is uh-huh. it's funny that there is an old person's social media. <laughs> when I was a kid I never even knew that would have been a thing. <laughs> it's the worst that my kids listen to rap music that I can't stand. All right, it kills oh. me. <laughs> they got that's another thing. They got such good fucking rap music now and people want to <laughs> no, shit all over no, it. They don't. They actually do. There's really Drake Drake's fucking fire. No. I mean, every now and then he puts out a bad song that you know is going to make millions on the radio. But it's like, so what? He makes so many fire fucking hits. Why why shit on the guy? Because he's Canadian? What the fuck does that have to do with anything? Can he speak with a southern accent? (laughs) Which, by the way, Pasty, I had to bring it up again. I wasn't going to call you out. He's not Canadian, but he he doesn't. 
He's, he's Canadian not, to but... me. All the best. <laughs> we'll call him Canadian. I mean, he's, he's a New Yorker. That's close to Canada, I guess. Yeah, yeah Niagara Falls you know. is the only barrier there. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, now we've really gotten off the beaten path again, which is great. That, that's, that's typical beef sticks. That's trademark beef sticks. We love it. Hey, that's fine. You know, we're only 25 minutes into the first episode of two. I could go off for another hour. I could describe vividly the times I welled up with tears during the tributes. Not so much the matches. The matches were kind of funny. I got to say, the heel work from MJF and Eddie Kingston kind of made me uncomfortable. I get it, because you got to get your heat, and this is the easiest possible way to ever get heat ever. Right. But when it's that easy, like, do you really have to go for it? I guess I liked it just because I know that Brody, that Brody Jr., that yeah. I guess Brody Huber knows these guys, and I'm sure he had fun with it, and he got to whap them with kendo sticks and <laughs> shit. And I thought it was kind of cool. It I is do, good to see, know I, that kendo sticks sound like they're effective even when a small child is <laughs> Right. And I do disagree with you. I wasn't really, I wasn't really taken in by most of the, uh, what little bit of the uh, tributes that I seen, I was like, meh, it's all right. But I'll be honest, I skipped through most of them. Cause it's like, well. Uh, not me. I, didn't I, skip but, I, I, I think I watched like three of them and they all said like the exact same thing. Like I watched the John Moxley one and it was like just a typical like something you'd say politically or something. It, and it really definitely had no was heart. very promo and I was like, for Moxley. Yeah, yeah I was promo. like, that killed it right. And that was the first one and I was like. Well, if I skip and I land on a promo, I'll finish watching it, but that's all. <laughs> it was it was it was fairly cool when Eric Rowan came out. I'm glad AEW didn't like jump it to sign him or anything, right? There. Eric Redbeard. It, well, it depends on who you're asking, I guess. <laughs> I know that was funny. They kept, oh, Excalibur kept trying to shut him up. Eric Redbeard. <laughs> Eric Isn't Redbeard. Eric Redbeard? And Jericho's Rowan. like, it's Rowan. <laughs> no, Redbeard. <laughs> That was, that it was, was in awful. the same match, too, that he kept calling John Silver Johnny Hungy. And I'm like, that's not his name. Yeah. That's, that might be his thing he says, but that's not his name. Uh. <laughs> but all in all, it was, it, was a, it was a good tribute. And I hope our, our little tribute um, held up a candle to that in any way, shape, or form. Um, he's going to be missed. He's, he's going to be on my mind. And... Uh, I wouldn't doubt if he became our logo for a period of time at some point. Your candle burned out long before. The legend of a deer. I am really excited, though, if AEW makes it 10 years and Brody Jr. gets to join. Fucking uh, uh, MJF is going to be at the pinnacle of his career at that point, and he's going to put <laughs> Brody Jr. over so hard. It's going to be the greatest thing. Right. It, it'll be it'll be wonderful. And, and and I'm trusting. I'm putting the trust. I know it's a long shot, but I think AEW is going to be around. If Impact can do it. It's, it's uh, you know, it's one of those things. It's like we're going to have to wait and find out. I'd like I, – I, I want to believe they will, but that's a, that's a huge stone that very few companies have. Yeah. Yep. But um, with that being said, talk about uh, talk about companies that lasted way longer than you ever thought they fucking would have. Pasty, we're on season four. We're on year five. The seventh wow. annual Beefy Awards. Yes. Whoever would have thought we'd make it this far. Oh, this is good. This is great. Um, you know, make sure to castrate your animals. <laughs> And with that being said, Pasty, let's move right on to 2020 of Beefies. I think I'll start it out here, if that's okay with you. We got the best facial hair. We always got to bring that up because a real man knows real facial hair, and he's not, oh, yeah. he's not afraid to admit it. And he's not afraid to compliment another man on it. And this one goes to Eddie Kingston's buddy, buddy, The Butcher. Yes, indeed. The man's got a brutal look. Just face it he's got a snazzy stash and and you just i just picture him you know the butcher i picture him with a big cleaver shaving uh -huh. his, the side of his face and leaving his stash good while he while he uh 
curls it with some with some beef lard or pork lard. Oh, you know any man with some big mutton chops has got a special place in my heart. Damn right. Chop uh, them muttons, baby. 